So in this video we're going to be looking at indices. So the majority of what we see here should be GCSE material. But really it depends on how confident you are with identifying what a particular index means. So it's a good thing to practice, definitely, because if you get the knack of it, these are some easy marks. So what I'm going to go through are the laws of indices and how they work in this video. So first of all, if you multiply with the same base number, so x to the power of a times x to the power of b, so x here I'm referring to as the base number, then this is x to the power of a plus b. So for example, 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 5 is 3 to the power of 4 plus 5, so 9. Okay, so that would be the first law of indices, if you will. So let's look at another. If you instead divide, so but have, still have the same base number, so x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b, then this is x to the power of a minus b. So 5 to the power of 7 divided by 5 to the power of 2 is 5 to the power of 7 take away 2. So 5 to the power of 5. Another law, okay, is that if you have x to the power of a all to the power of b, then this is x to the power of a times b. So, for example, if you had 4 cubed, and this was to the power of 5, then this would be 4 to the power of 15. Now, what's useful is that you could rewrite this as 4 to the power of 5 cubed. Okay? You can reverse those because 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3. So both of these would give you the same answer. And it's useful to know that you can switch those two around in order to delegate the order. Well, in, or <laughs> in order to um, choose the order, if you will. So what else have we got? Well, there's also... Understanding what we mean by a negative index. So x to the power of minus a, for example. If you have a negative index, then this means that it is 1 over x to the power of a. So examples of this are 3 to the power of minus 1 would be 1 over 3 to the 1, so just 1 over 3. 2 to the power of minus 3 would be 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8. Okay? Then, when you've dealt with neg negative indices, you can deal with fractional indices. So x to the power of 1 over a refers to the eighth root of x. So, for example, um, 16 to the power of a half is the square root of 16, which would be 4 or 8 to the power of 1 third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. So you need to know about negative indices and fractional indices. So how about if you combine them? So if you combine them, so 
Let's do an example rather than a rule. Well, we can write it down as a rule. x to the power of a over b. Um, well, let's not do that. Let's do uh, minus 1 over a then. Okay, so combining those two, this would be 1 over x to the power of 1 over a. Okay, which would be 1 over the eighth root of x. But in a similar way, you could incorporate as well fractional indices and that third rule. So you could have something like x to the power of a over b, which I previously wrote down. Now that is equal to x to the power of 1 over b, all to the power of a. Because a times 1 over b is the a over b. That's using that third law there. And because we had that interaction where you could switch them, you could write that as x to the power of a, all to the power of 1 over b. And this is especially useful when you're thinking about doing a root first, or the um, index first, the like, cubing or um, squaring. So as an example of that, I'll just get rid of these bits. As an example of that, I would probably say something like, um, if you were looking at 8 to the power of uh, 5 thirds, okay, then this is equal to 8 to the power of a third to the power of 5. Now, 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8. So that's 2 to the power of 5. Now, 2 to the power of 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Now, I could, I could have gone about this in a different way. I could have said, well, 8 to the 5 thirds is 8 to the power of 5 to the power of a third. But the problem with that is that 8 to the power of 5 is a big number. And then I've got to do the cube root of a big number that I don't really know. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily recognise the cube root would be 32. This is a non-calculated paper, remember. So it is best to usually do the root first and then do the square or the cubing or to the power of 5 in this case. So the only thing that's left, really, about indices to make sure you know is that anything to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, x to the power of 0 is 1. So 3 to the power of 0, for example, is 1. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. A million to the power of 0 is 1. And this, these are the rules of indices, the laws of indices, and that's how they work. And we'll be looking at exam style questions in the following video.